Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel. Fear has returned to crypto markets, but not so much for XRP holders. In fact, out of the top 10 cryptocurrencies, at the time I'm recording this anyway, there are only two cryptocurrencies that are not in the red, and XRP is one of them. And if you look here on the right, for those of you that care to look at your screen, uh, this is live coin watch. You can see the, these are the weekly charts. Let me just scroll on down. You can see that almost all of these charts look exactly the same. There's some exceptions, but almost all of them look just very samey samey. And it's just a sea of red, almost everything in the red. And that's because uh, the crypto contagion from the FTX fallout has spread. Now, as I said before, even if we saw something collapse and it resulted in prices moving downwards, uh, and I predicted that it would happen to some degree. I said, even if it happens, it's probably going to be short-lived and it wouldn't be the end of the world. So it, it is officially here, though. And uh, to, to, to what entity did the FTX crypto contagion spread? Uh, a bank, in, technically in legacy finance. So it's, in theory, like you know, outside the, the world of crypto. It just ha happens to be friendly to crypto-related companies, or was until it uh, you know ceased to function. But it's a bank called Silvergate. And so I'm going to give you all the specifics so you know exactly what's happening here, but uh, this is not something that scares me. When stuff like, like when stuff like this happens, it's the same thing when, when Luna collapsed, then you saw the contagion spread last year to, you know, Three Hours Capital and Voyager, Celsius, all that stuff. You know the story. So the fact that we're seeing an, an, another important entity, you know, in the world of crypto collapse and then market participants get fearful and start making emotional, uh, important financial decisions, you know, it's, just, it's not surprising. I wouldn't categorize it as wise. But, uh, I, and look, I don't know where the bottom is for this, but <clears throat> we may have already found it, or maybe things go a little bit lower, but eventually people get back to base level and stop freaking out, and it's going to be okay. So I'm just going to continue to do <clears throat> what I always do when it comes to investing. Nothing. <laughs> After I make my purchase, I sit around and do nothing, and I don't feel sad, sad, scare, scare feelings when crap like this happens, because it just doesn't freaking matter. <laughs> but uh, XRP performing beautifully. Uh, I'll get into it. Before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Okay, and so uh, despite the fact that crypto is in a sea of red, as I have illustrated here, XRP is currently up 1.3%, uh, hanging around at $0.39. Cents. You've got Bitcoin currently at $21,673. Uh, it's down 2.59% over the last 24 hours. You got the market cap for the asset class barely above $1 trillion at this point. Bitcoin dominance about where it's been for most of the last 30 days, 41.51%. And here's the crypto fear and greed index. Folks, it's been a while. I bet you missed it, but we're back into fear. <laughs> oh, yay. Good times because reasons. So here you go. 44 out of 100 on the crypto fear and greed index. Uh, so we're at the higher end of the fear category. I don't know how long it's going to stay here, but, um, you know, the world's going to keep on turning here. You know, the collapse that we saw with the Silvergate Bank, which, again, I'll get into in a minute, uh, it's not going to cause crypto to cease to exist. It's not going to cause XRP to cease to exist or pick your favorite crypto. It just ain't, ain't going to happen. But it, it, look at this chart for those of you that care to. This is a 24-hour chart for XRP, and it just pretty much moves sideways. So when the news hit, which I'll get into, uh, it happened around, just, just call it roughly 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's my time zone. That's why I said Central Standard Time. And you, so you can see here, XRP wasn't that far off from its 24-hour bottom at that point. It barely moved lower at all, and then it quickly moved to the, back to the upside. It, it mostly moved sideways and then ultimately kind of inched up. Um, but this is markedly different than what we saw from almost every other cryptocurrency in existence, including the king crypto, as some like to call it, the least technologically advanced crypto on the planet, Bitcoin. Um, here you can see at close to 5 p.m., uh, Bitcoin just started plummeting along with the rest of the market. And uh, it eventually, about, call it what, about 10 minutes later, it seemed to find a bottom for the moment anyway, kind of trended sideways mostly for, uh, what, another, what, so call it eight hours, something like that. But it's been inching downwards ever since. Not looking very good here. So again, compare that, and I'll go flip back just to the there's the XRP chart. I'll just flip back and forth between the two really quick so you can see the change there. XRP does not care what happens to Bitcoin right now. And so why might this be happening? 
Well, it's it's the same thing I was talking about literally yesterday. What has changed over the last roughly, I guess at this point in the time of recording, it's now been what probably over, you know, about 50 hours at this point. So what has changed in, in that time frame? Well, that's about when Judge Torres uh, issued her ruling on the Daubert challenges, which is widely read by everybody that's paying attention as very good for Ripple and not so hot for the SEC. Might that be a notable reason that we're seeing this renewed confidence? And so that results in headlines like this from the Crypto Basic. XRP only asset in green among top 10 crypto aims for 40 cents. And by the way, I'll note that it ultimately did reach above 40 cents within the last 24 hours. It's just a little bit for, below that right now. Uh, then there was a headline like this. And I don't feel the need to go through the article for this video, but uh, this one was titled XRP price surges as investors anticipate settlement this month. And yeah, in terms of whether or not there's settlement, eh, in terms of a conclusion of the case, quite plausible. Uh, I think that there's an increased uh, potential for a jury trial instead, in which case, ugh, I'll talk more about that in a separate video. I don't even want to get into it right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll put out a video later today, but yeah, there's a lot to say on that topic, actually. I talked about it yesterday, but there's more to add. Um, and so I put out this tweet just last night. The SEC drives the price of XRP, not Ripple. <laughs> Because, like, I'm tired of this claim, especially from the SEC. Ripple's driving the price of XRP. And so, in tweeting out, the SEC drives the price of XRP, not Ripple. I'm only half kidding. Now, obviously, in a general sense, yes, of course, XRP will still continue to move in tandem with the rest of crypto markets. It's nice to see it briefly decoupling here for a very brief moment in time. Uh, where this is, is additional confidence specifically amongst XRP holders. I'm happy to see that. But that doesn't mean that there's a, some sort of permanent detachment from uh, Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market. So it's going to continue to do that. Really more so what I was getting at here is that it's provably the case. Ripple's positive announcements in business developments have done about zero ever for, for positive price action for XRP. The, the markets just don't respond. All the, Ripple can say all the good stuff that's happening, they have been for a decade, and it, the market doesn't respond. It it's, XRP continues to move in tandem. So, but, so what, what outside of Bitcoin has impacted the price of XRP? The SEC filing a lawsuit against Ripple. It's not Ripple that's causing it. It's the SEC that's causing the price action. And here, in this case, it's their um, not-so-hot performance when it comes to Judge Torres' ruling that... Uh, has resulted, I think, in what we've seen for much of the last, you know, you know, call it roughly two and a half days at this point. Don't mind seeing that one bit. And, and also, you know, markets were already having a hard time. And actually, I pointed this out yesterday, too, but I'll just briefly mention it. Uh, based on what uh, Fed share said, uh, you know, in terms of uh, interest rate situation not looking so hot. Uh, so markets are already freaking out for crypto and uh, and equities, actually, though. And I, sh I showed, you know, what the SSB 500 was doing. I showed what was going on with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Very, they're practically the same charts. So that part was not unique to crypto, but you have that. And then the very next day, the FTX contagion spreads. It's like, so you just get hammered. That's why you're seeing the prices going down. It's not, it has nothing to do with long-term viability of Bitcoin or XRP or anything of the sort. It has to do with irrational, emotional humans making important financial decisions based off of how they feel in the moment. Hmm. Okay, well, you're going to have a bad time doing that. So let's go ahead and uh, and break this down. Um, here you have uh, some tweets from uh, Caitlin Long, the founder and CEO of Custodia Bank. And this is a crypto bank. We're talking about custody specifically for cryptocurrency. Rather uh, sharp individual. I always look forward to seeing what... Uh, her perspective is when it comes to stuff having to do with legal. Because, by the way, she actually warned the government, including the SEC, about FTX uh, way before it was found to be a Ponzi. Uh, she had some, she, I don't know if she publicly stated exactly what evidence she had, but she handed that over. And then uh, the government just was like, ooh, just did nothing. And then ultimately the, the, the Ponzi scheme was exposed in November. But um, there is a United States senator named Sherrod Brown who put out a note blaming uh, crypto for the fall of, you know, crypto's the enemy, blah, blah, blah. It's on your screen. I don't feel the need to read it. Crypto's the bad guy. FTX causes, you know, contagion spreading, all that jazz. And yes, the, the contagion spreading, but that's not because of crypto. It's, it doesn't mean there's like a problem inherent with crypto itself. It has to do with the fact that customer assets were stolen and gambled. They were gambled with. It was a Ponzi scheme. I don't care what the asset is, that's always illegal. That is always illegal. 
And also, in this case, there's another culprit that Caitlin Long points out, and it is fractional reserve banking. So check this out. Here's what Caitlin Long had to say. Uh, she tagged uh, uh, Senator Sherrod Brown and wrote, You're wrong that crypto triggered Silvergate's issue. What did it was $13.3 billion in demand deposits that depositors could withdraw in minutes, but only $1.4 billion of cash. Had, Silver, uh, had Silvergate Bank held $13.3 billion of cash, the bank run wouldn't have impaired its capital. Not a crypto problem. Okay, so that is certainly true. And I'll also note that all of the bank's customers are getting 100% of their funds back. So this is, this is not a situation where there was some sort of gambling or Ponzi. This isn't a Celsius situation. Nothing like that. Uh, that's, that's what I've read. I read it in the Wall Street Journal I, I, and, well, a number of articles. And uh, that is what everybody is reporting within mainstream media and crypto media. So I'll just take, take them at their word at this point. Uh, so still, <laughs> what's with the disparity? Well, I do want to get into that here. But first, let me show you this screen grab that Caitlin Long shared. And you can see here, uh, non-interest bearing demand accounts, $13.3 billion. So that's deposits. And what exactly was on hand here? Uh, $1.38 billion. So you can round up, that's why you say 1.4. That's, that, that, that's what was on cash and cash equivalents. Not enough to get back. So then Caitlin Long wrote, when a bank with highly volatile deposits makes a levered interest in 10-year bonds into a Fed tightening cycle, what happens when a bank run hits is predictable. Liquidate those bonds at a loss, impairing the bank's capital. It's an indictment against fractional reserve banking. And so fractional reserve banking is the system in which when you deposit your money into a bank, uh, you know, the bank's not just holding that for you and providing these services and get all these brick and mortar locations out of the, the kindness of their heart. Uh, they're making money off your money because what they're doing is you're taking, they're taking your money and loaning it out to people who want more money but don't have it. That's how this works. So new money could create it out of thin air. It's called fractional reserve banking. And banks only have to, to have a certain percentage. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but they only have to have a certain percentage of funds um, available like on hand at any given moment. So if there's a bank run and here there was, that can be a problem. So, uh, and, uh, and it's, so, so that's the other call, but fa fractional reserve banking and... And, and so again, but see, that is not, that's not a crypto thing. In fact, you know, Caitlin Long, she pointed out in a separate tweet, I can pull this up. Um, she actually told the Fed, uh, you know, as a representative of Custodia Bank, because she's the, the founder and CEO, told the Fed that, uh, you know, the funds should have to be backed 100%. The, the, she told the Fed that, and the Fed blocked the idea. said, no, absolutely not, because they're not going to change the system that's been entrenched for, at this point, whatever it is, 100-ish years plus or minus, I can't remember exactly. But uh, point being, there's that, and um, and then it was all set off by FTX. So take a look at uh, some of this article. This is from the Wall Street Journal covering the topic further. Uh, the crypto meltdown has claimed its first big casualty in the mainstream financial system, Silvergate Capital Corp. The California lender, one of the crypto market's top banks, said it would wind down and return all deposits following a run that forced it to sell off assets at a steep loss to cover billions of dollars of withdrawals. Silvergate is also considering how best to resolve claims and preserve the residual value of its assets, the bank said in a news release Wednesday. Silvergate catered to companies in the crypto business. It helped institutional investors move dollars in and out of crypto trading platforms through its Silvergate exchange network, which it stopped operating last week. And by the way, again, I want to be clear, in case it wasn't clear enough a little bit earlier in the video. When this news dropped, that is when Bitcoin started dropping. So it's it, it, there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with Bitcoin other than the fact that it's technologically not as useful as we wish it were, right? Uh, without Layer 2 technology, we'll see what happens there. Uh, but uh, there's nothing wrong with XRP. There's nothing wrong with anything else that... Uh, well, actually, actually, I don't even have to say XRP in this case. What am I talking about? It went up. <laughs> XRP went up. What, bank implodes and markets freak out? XRP go up. Okay, well, I don't mind that. But it, the point is, the fact that there's a lot of money lost here, uh, it, well, in terms of market capitalization, 
It's, it just doesn't matter. Anyway, peace continues. The bank's decline tracked the unraveling of the broader crypto industry, which took a turn for the worse following the collapse of FTX last year. FTX and other companies controlled but by the crypto exchange's founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, accounted for about $1 billion of the bank's deposits. Their collapse rattled the crypto market and sent Silvergate's stock down sharply. The bank's implosion makes it one of the few non-crypto companies to go out of business as a result of the market route. And so again, right there, that is why it is, is the textbook definition of the contagion spreading. This is absolutely contagion spreading here. It's just the degree to which it's scary, currently not very scary. It's not good, it's bad, but it's not something that, you know, I personally am going to be losing sleep over. Anyway, peace continues. A handful of banks took a chance on crypto customers that other lenders wouldn't touch. But Silvergate went all in, revamping its business model to revolve around serving crypto-related businesses. Those customers rushed to pull their deposits out of Silvergate following the FTX collapse. A subsequent regulatory crackdown, in turn, spooked banks serving crypto companies, prompting them to back away from the business. Silvergate's nearly 10-year crypto experiment collapsed in a matter of months. And check this out, folks, because this bank, when they, they, until they jumped into crypto, they were doing other stuff in, uh, in uh, real estate. So it's just interesting that they made what seemed like a wise business move, and it should have been, frankly, uh, just you know, helping an underserved uh, industry growing really, really fast as a result of, of uh, ma you know, making this pivot, you know, helping crypto businesses out. It's just funny to think, had they not done that, They'd still exist today, probably. They'd still be way smaller than they ultimately grew to, but they'd still exist here. So, uh, again, it's, 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 I'm just, it's just an observation. I, I don't really have, I'm not reading, I'm not saying they should or shouldn't have done anything, or if there's something that could have been done, should have been done a little bit differently here, so that they'd still be in business and still could have, you know, offered services to crypto businesses. It's just one of those things where it's like kind of interesting and funny to think, huh, as awesome as that was for most of the last decade, man. <laughs> Look at the end result here. But it's not, but again, it's not specific. There's nothing inherent about crypto that caused the problem. It's humans stealing from others, gambling other people's assets. And then Caitlin Long had pointed out, you know, fractional reserve banking. How, without fractional reserve banking, then this wouldn't have been a thing even. So then that would, would obviously, you know, and if that were the case that funds, funds had to be 100% backed, that would change the economy in many different ways. But it used to be more like, like we didn't always have fractional reserve banking here. There are, there are ways to have economies that don't have fractional reserve banking. Um, you, you know, there would just have to be like profit centers would have to be elsewhere is the point. But I guess that would be outside the scope of this video. So let me just go ahead and read a little further here. Uh, the firm sold, off, oh no, here we go. In 2013, the bank was a commercial real estate lender with a handful of branches in the San Diego area in search of deposits. It opened up to crypto companies the next year and its deposits grew dramatically with nearly all of them coming from the digital currency world. The firm sold off most of its traditional banking business to concentrate on crypto companies and institutional investors providing banking services to exchanges such as FTX, Coinbase, and Kraken. And check out here, because this is, uh, so we're getting to the specifics of why this didn't, or to the degree to which this didn't work out and how this all unfolded. Instead of trying, uh, instead, I'm sorry, instead of tying its deposits up in loans, the bank kept almost all of them in cash or easy to sell securities. That allowed it to meet withdrawals that ballooned into the billions. Crypto related deposits plunged 68% in the fourth quarter. To satisfy them, Silvergate liquidated securities it was holding on its balance sheet. The $718 million it lost selling the debt far exceeded the bank's profit since at least 2013. And so there you go. That's why they're out of business. And this is just how banks operate. This, this, is, this is just how it is. It is heavily regulated. This is what the federal government says to do. This isn't Silvergate Bank doing something they shouldn't do. This is what happens with banks. This is how they operate. Them's the breaks, man. I, I, I don't know to, I've talked about fractional reserve banking before. It's been a, it's been a hot minute. It doesn't always come up, but uh, there we are. So you all let me know what you think. But hey, at least today, pretty good to be an XRP holder, especially compared to pretty much other, you know, any other crypto on the planet in terms of recent price action. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.